Hello, so my name is Dr. Niket Kaisere from Department of Chemical Engineering at IIT Madras and I am going to deliver essentially 40 lecture series on computational techniques. Uh, this topic is also known as numerical methods. Uh, in the first module basically I will give the overall introduction to this particular topic. Okay, so first let me just uh, give you some details about myself. My name is uh, Dr. Niket Kaisere, uh, as I said uh, I am from chemical engineering and my research interests essentially involve looking at catalytic micro reactors, fuel processing, fuel cell systems, uh, multi-scale optimization, multi-scale modeling and process control. Uh, so essentially what I do for my research is uh, look at models uh, for various small scale systems and uh, basically I use computers in order to uh, get the results uh, numerically from these systems. Uh, so one of the most important aspects of my research is uh, using these numerical methods within a, a computer framework in order to understand how the actual systems behave in the real life. So that is the kind of research interest I have. And that is really the background why I am doing this uh, computational techniques course. Uh, this computational techniques or numerical methods uh, or whatever you would want to call it, uh, essentially uh, they are ways to do the uh, computation which are otherwise tedious. We can use the computers in order to do it to simplify the job for us and their popularity essentially has come out because of the popularity of computers and cheap computing. Uh, so, uh, about this course, uh, again this course is designed to give an overview of computational techniques of interest to engineers. So that is really the key word over here, uh, numerical methods or computational techniques have been used in various fields not just in engineering. Uh, for example, uh, for forecasting of the weather patterns that requires solving very large scale uh, differential equations and uh, it requires really fast computing and really the numerical methods or computational techniques are at heart of these uh, different models. Uh, likewise let us say uh, the stock, stock predictions, uh, you know lot of uh, these trading companies they decide what stocks to buy, how to make the investments and so on based on prediction of how the markets are going to behave. Okay. So, the numerical techniques are used uh, over there as well. Uh, another example where numerical techniques are used for example, let us say an industry wants to decide how much raw material to purchase, how much product uh, uh, to manufacture and so on and they will essentially uh, you know create what is known as a sub supply chain management problem and at the heart of those problems again really when you go down to the low, lower most level of it. Again you will have these numerical techniques, we need these numerical techniques to efficiently solve these models in order to understand how the system behave, in order to uh, optimize how the system behave, in order to control. At the heart of these control techniques also go these modeling methods and these numerical methods which we will then solve in order to make decisions on what to do. So the focus of these particular lecture series will be on the numerical methods, their pro properties and analysis. The focus will not really be on the applications of these numerical techniques. Uh, the focus really will be on using this numerical techniques, understanding these numerical techniques and trying to see what properties they have, how they behave. So we will essentially take simple examples in order to understand the systems. We are not necessarily going to take chemical engineering examples. But these examples are going to motivate uh, what these numerical techniques are or these computational techniques are, uh, what are their properties, when can we apply them and how can we apply them. Uh, this course will be divided into approximately uh, 40 one hour lectures uh, and uh, that is the overall uh, number of lectures I plan to cover uh, and essentially what you need to get the best out of these lectures is essentially to work with me during during the lecture. So uh, what I will try to do during each lecture is uh, uh, you know have certain example problems where perhaps if you are watching this on YouTube or something like that you can just click on the pause button and try to solve this uh, particular problem along with me and then 
see once the problem is solved you can compare uh, the results that I have gotten with the results that you have gotten. If that is uh, uh, the way you pro uh, proceed it will be very beneficial uh, uh, this is uh, overall lecture series. Uh, these lectures are essentially meant for uh, second and third year uh, undergraduate students uh, B tech students uh, in their second and third year. So, I do not assume any sort of background the background that assume I assume is essentially 10th and 11th grade uh, mathematics you should be uh, familiar with uh, and uh, you should be able to use a calculator and spreadsheet such as excel and if you do not have an excel that is not a problem you can also use uh, the google docs application uh, there is a spreadsheet in google docs that is available. So, we will really require a pen pen and a notebook and a calculator to do those hand calculations and uh, an excel spreadsheet and google docs uh, uh, in order to solve some of these uh, relatively simpler prob problems, but still something that cannot be solved using a calculator you will need the spreadsheet in order to solve that. Uh, and my final point is what, what I have found, found is uh, you know the learning is enhanced if people are not doing it on their own but along with a couple of friends. So, if you have a couple of friends who have uh, the same goals in understanding numerical techniques and so on, uh, you can always work with them and try to understand some of these, these things together. So, these are uh, you know general suggestions uh, for students who are uh, essentially in their second or third year. Uh, if uh, you have already gone through a course in uh, computational techniques uh, or numerical methods or whatever they might call, uh, you can just go right ahead and view these lectures. Uh, okay. So, now let me give you an overview of the course what we are go going to cover in this course and how we are going to go about it and so on. Before I do that I will give a working definition of what we mean by computational techniques. Again the word computational techniques, numerical methods, numerical techniques or computational methods are really used interchangeably uh, by, by people. Uh, so, at the heart of these computational techniques are essentially computers that we are going to use to solve problems. Okay. Uh, these are the kind of problems which it is fairly difficult or perhaps impossible to solve it analytically or to take a pen and paper and uh, try to algebraically or geometrically try to solve these uh, types of problems it is uh, perhaps difficult or impossible to do it. Uh, so, we, we are going to use the computers to solve these problems by stepwise repeated and iterative solution methods. Uh, so, the solution methods are essentially going to be uh, repetitive. So, what that, that really means is that if you have a small problem you will use the solution methods uh, the uh, algorithm uh, steps you will use one or two steps uh, in order to solve a, so a small problem. When you get to a larger problem you will have to repeat those two or three steps over and over again until you reach a particular predefined criteria which tells you that yes now I have got the solution of this particular problem. Again what I mean by that I will come, uh, come to that in this lecture I will take a very small example uh, and I will come to that, uh, that aspect and it is a stepwise procedure that means what you want to reduce the overall system to is a system of uh, it is an algorithm of various different steps that you need to carry out one after the, after the other uh, and that is what makes it very amenable to putting it in a computer and using those computers to solve the problems. And these are the methods which would otherwise be either tedious or unsolvable by hand calculations. And just to give you an example if we are going to talk about uh, say the models for solving the overall uh, uh, climate uh, uh, models essentially to see how the global warming is going to affect uh, the overall uh, system. In that particular case these models have millions of equations you know you can uh, perhaps solve one or two or three equations with hand, but we have a million coupled highly nonlinear uh, equations is going to be very difficult to solve or not difficult in fact and pretty much impossible to solve those equations by hand. And what you will you will then need to do is use those computers to do these calculations which are otherwise tedious or unsolvable uh, by humans. 
So, again I had mentioned right in the beginning the numerical techniques or computational techniques became popular because of availability of cheap computing. So, uh, over about the last 25 years or so uh, essentially computer computers have become very inexpensive and uh, pretty much every home has a computer uh, these days and essentially that is what has uh, led to the popularity of uh, the, uh, these computational techniques. Uh, they are useful to solve problems for which algebraic solution cannot be obtained. Uh, for example, if you have a complicated set of equation and you want to find the roots of that particular equation, it is uh, sometimes uh, it is easy to use uh, you know pen and paper to solve them, sometimes it is not all that easy to use pen and paper. In that particular case, you will use this numerical techniques uh, in order to solve them. Uh, the, the several advantages of these numerical techniques are that first they are extremely powerful uh, problem solving tools. Just the example I took uh, a couple of minutes back, uh, the climate models. Uh, these climate models would be impossible to solve if we did not have extremely powerful uh, problem solving tools and ex extremely powerful computers where we can solve them. So, both of these uh, conditions are perhaps necessary conditions for us to solve these complicated types of problems. Uh, the second advantage is that the commercial softwares and packages uh, are nowadays readily available which use which are uh, suitable for certain type of applications they may, need not be uh, general purpose. Uh, and the final advantage of these numerical techniques is that they can provide additional insights into various engineering problems. Uh, for example, how you can provide provide insights is you solve this particular problem using some of these numerical methods and you tweak these problems in order to understand what are the physical reasoning behind how these things, uh, uh, how these particular equipment or that particular reactor behaves. So, uh, what really the numerical methods allow you to do is. Uh, they allow you to look at your experimental system in a more closer way and try to understand why the system is behaving in a particular way and uh, uh, try to uh, analyze all those results in, in a better manner. Okay. So, that is what uh, really the aim of using a numerical technique is going to be that is not something that this particular course is going to focus on we are going to focus on understanding this numerical techniques itself. Uh, now, I will just give you a historical perspective of uh, behind this numerical techniques. Uh, so, although the popularity of the numerical techniques can be essentially uh, be attributed to computing and computers, uh, but the use of the philosophy behind numerical techniques comes almost 2000 years before even the first computer uh, came into existence. Okay. And uh, perhaps uh, arguably the oldest numerical method is perhaps the Babylonian method. to find square root of 2. Okay. Nowadays, finding square root of 2 is fairly simple. What you do is you take a calculator uh, and just punch a couple of keys and uh, you will get the square root of 2. Uh, if you go back, uh, this is about uh, approximately 1750 BC. Okay. If you go back uh, essentially 2000 years, uh, or rather uh, 3700 years back, uh, that was the time when uh, these guys developed uh, an approximate method for finding the square root of 2 and the method that, uh, that we can also call as the Henon algorithm. Is as is goes like this, let us say we will start with some approximation of we will call this particular variable as x, we will uh, start with certain approximation say x equal to 0 0.5. We do not know the uh, actual value of square root of 2, but we know that the square root of 2 
uh, one of the square roots is going to be positive. So, we will start let us say with an approximate value of uh, x equal to 0 0.5. So, the method that we will use is x nu that is the new guess of our x value is going to be an average of x and 2 divided by x. Okay. So, for example, if we start with x equal to 0 0.5, what we will get is for x equal to 0 0.5, half of 0 0.5 plus 4, 2 divided by 0 0.5 is 4. Uh, so, our new guess is going to be 2.25. Now, remember the solution of square root of 2 is approximately 1.414. Uh, if you look at this particular value or if you look at this particular value, both these values are pretty far away from the actual value of 2, the actual value of 2 to up to 3 digits after the decimal we can say is 1.414 and neither of these values are close enough to this value, uh, to the actual value. So, what do we do? We take this x new value and repeat this particular procedure. Uh, over and over again. So, we iterate this is what we call by iterating over this particular uh, equation and we do that repeatedly until we get the, the actual solution. So, now what happens is what we will rewrite this equation as x i plus 1 equal to half of x i plus 2 divided by x i. Okay, we are kind of trying to write it in an, in an algorithmic form and then we will repeat this for i equal to 1 to some large value n. Okay. And this overall process is what is known as an iterative method and it captures the essence of all the numerical techniques that have uh, come, come after or beyond this particular point. This particular method is one, it is iterative. The second thing is that this method gives you an approximate solution. The solution that we are going to get for square root of 2 is not going to be an exact solution, but it is going to be an approximate solution. Now, we can specify up to what level we want to go when, when we want to solve this particular problem and based on those specifications, we will get this particular approximate solution. At certain point, we will say, well, we are going to be happy with this approximate solution because we do not care about the say the 10th uh, digit after the decimal point. So, we are essentially going to say we are going to be happy if we get uh, the solution accurate to the 10th decimal place. I will take this example again in a, in a couple of minutes, but let us proceed with the overall historical perspective about square root of 2. What the Hinon algorithm is, it is an iterative algorithm and it gives you an approximate solution. In India, we had this Sulba Sutra. It came independently and approximately 1000 years after the Babylonian method and according to the Sulba Sutra, square root of 2 is approximately equal to 1, I am sorry, 1 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 multiplied by 4 plus 1 by 3 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 34. Okay. So, this was uh, the Sulba Sutra, it came uh, approximately in uh, 600 uh, BC and this is the approximate value of square root of 2 that the Sulba Sutra gives you. Now, this particular method is what is known as a direct method. Okay. Why it is direct is because there is no iteration, you are not going over this particular equation again and again you are taking one equation, plugging in those values, you will get the final solution and that is why it is a direct method. 
but again the solution is not a true solution but it is only an approximate solution. Okay. So, uh, these are the couple of uh, methods that uh, have been proposed for finding the square root of 2 which are kind of familiar uh, to the numerical techniques that we look at uh, these days. Uh, this is basically a, a, a series and uh, we are essentially aware of say infinite series such as the series for finding e to the power x. and e to the power x is 1, uh, 1 plus 1 by sorry 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial and so on and it is an infinite series. And we can essentially use this particular series, we can essentially keep adding additional terms in this particular series and we will get the result to be closer and closer to e to the power e, e to the power x. So, when we chop off this infinite series at a certain point, what we will get is we will get an approximate solution. Uh, okay. So, the Sulva Sutra is not an infinite series, it is a finite series and that is why the, method, the result that you get is an approximate, but it is still a direct result, but uh, the methods that are going to use infinite series which we will look at during uh, the, uh, this particular course, uh, we will end up getting infinite uh, sorry we will end up getting an approximate solution, but we will have to iterate on this infinite series or each time add an additional term in this infinite series and decide whether we are happy with the quality of the solution or whether we need to proceed further and further uh, with uh, with additional terms. And the most popular infinite series the in this particular course is going to be the Taylor series. And just I will just write down the Taylor series is f of x plus a where if x is going to be a variable and a is some particular value that we have chosen is going is equal to f of a plus f dash of a multiplied by x minus a plus f double dash of a multiplied by x minus a squared divided by 2 factorial and so on. And that is also an infinite series where f of x plus a is found out as a sum of uh, these various terms which involve the function value evaluated at point a and the first differential, second differential and so on and so forth evaluated again at, at point a. Uh, this is going to be the Taylor series is going to be our workhorse during this course. We are going to use it extensively in order to understand uh, these numerical techniques or what they are, they are going to be. And we will come across this Taylor series pretty much again and again in every module in this particular course. Uh, so, again with respect to historical perspective just to summarize what, uh, what, uh, what we get from uh, the history about square root of 2 is that the numerical methods are going to be going to give us approximate solution to the real, uh, real problem. And second is they are going to be uh, either iterative methods or direct methods. Uh, direct methods means that at certain point of time we are going to stop uh, with the solution and we will get perhaps the true solution or an approximate solution. Iterative method means we are going to repeat that particular problem, uh, repeat that particular procedure over and over again. In this particular case the procedure was very simple, very straightforward just take an average of x and 2 divided by x it's, uh, and uh, that is how this particular method worked. Okay, the layout of the course is that the course will split into various modules. Each module you can think of uh, as a chapter uh, in a, of a textbook and it will be covered in about 4 to 6 1 hour lectures. Uh, each lecture we will go over the various aspects such as the motivation and overview of the topic. Then we will take a couple of examples, uh, we will get a graphical insight 
uh, we will derive the overall equation, analyze them, try to understand how this particular method works. And finally, what I will do uh, pretty much in the last half an hour of each module uh, is in the last lecture of each module for about half an hour I will spend to summarize what we have covered essentially in that particular module. Okay. And what I will do is let I will just go over how uh, you know each of these items will, can be covered for the Henan algorithm that we just looked at for finding square root of 2. Okay. Uh, so, the motivation, the motivation is essentially why learn about the Hinnan algorithm itself and the reason for talking about Hinnan algorithm are essentially twofold. One is because well history is interesting and we are trying to put things in perspective of uh, essentially what uh, uh, people before us thought about this problem, people before us thought about how to solve this particular problem. Uh, the second reason for, for this is that it really is one of the first uh, or perhaps the first numerical method and using this particular simple example uh, poses us very nicely in order to talk about uh, these numerical methods itself. Uh, then we took that example, we started with the initial guess of 0 0.5 and again we calculated the next value x equal to 0 0.5 plus 2 divided by 0 0.5, the average of that multiplied by half and the next value. So, what I have done is I have used uh, an excel sheet over here and this is just a result from the excel sheet. Uh, the first column is the iteration number of iteration 0, 0 th iteration uh, essentially signifies that was the initial guess that we started off with. Uh, the initial guess we started off with was x uh, over here I am writing uh, 2 by x and the average of these two numbers I am writing in the fourth column. Uh, the numerical method tells us essentially x is going to be the average of a x and 2 divided by x. So, that is the new value of x. So, we have taken this particular value and put it over here. Okay. So, we started with 0 0.5, the average of 0 0.5 and 2 by 0 0.5 is 2.25, we took that 2.25 as the next guess. Okay. So, the next guess after that is going to be 2.25 and 2 divided by 2.25, we take the average of these two numbers and the average of these two numbers happens to be 1.569. Okay. So, this average is going to be the value of x at the second iteration okay. and we continue this over and over again until a certain point. In this particular case, I have uh, done uh, the excel uh, simulations up to uh, iteration number 6. What we see over here is the first value was of x, the first initial guess of x was 0 0.5, the second initial guess was 2.25, both these values are quite far away from the actual solution 1.414214. Okay. The third value comes fairly close, we reach 1.569, the fourth value is even closer 1.422, 1 1.414, 1 1.414, 1.414. In this particular example, I was interested in getting the result up to 6 digits after a decimal point and that is why when the 6 digit after the decimal point did not change, I said I am going to be satisfied with my solution and I take the value of x that I obtained in the 6th iteration as my solution. So, this particular example has all the features essentially of uh, the numerical techniques that we talk about. It is an iterative procedure, it is the simple same simple equation that we apply over and over again in order to get the solution. We start with an initial guess and slowly converge to the desired solution and we define a stopping criterion where we are going to say that the solution that we now have we are satisfied with. Okay. Uh, so, the, uh, this is the way we would do the findings the square root of 2 if we were to use a Henan algorithm and formalize it uh, under the computational technique framework that we are going to use in this particular course. Now, let us look at the graphical insight. What I show over here in the blue curve over here is essentially how the value of x behaves. So, if I go back to the previous slide, this value of x I am plotting as the blue curve and this value 2 divided by x I am plotting as the red curve over here. Okay. So, this is the blue curve, this is the red curve defining x and 2 divided by x. 
uh, the x axis is the iteration number, 0th iteration is the initial guess, first iteration, second iteration and so on. This particular x value, the x value at iteration number i is just the average of this red value and this blue value in the previous iteration. And this black line, thin black horizontal line that you see over here is the true solution of square root of 2. Okay. You what you find is an interesting thing and again this is where the history becomes very interesting is if you want to see why perhaps uh, if we want to go back and think about why the Babylonian people thought about this particular uh, algorithm is essentially if you look at x and 2 divided by x they lie over here they are lying on either side of this particular line. So, if x is less than uh, square root of 2, 1 by uh, 2 by x is going to be greater than square root of 2. Over here, uh, from this value of x, the next value of x has gone to 2.25. So, the value of x now is greater than square root of 2, but value of 2 by x you will see is less than square root of 2. And you will see this pattern repeating throughout the, uh, uh, the overall values. No matter what positive value of x you choose, the value of 2 divided by x is also 1, it is also going to be positive and second, it is going to lie on the other side of the line square root of 2. Okay? So, essentially what we are doing over here is we are hoping that if we take the average of x and 2 divided by x. Uh, we will go closer and closer to square root of 2 and the reason is that the average of x and 2 divided by x always lies between the values x and 2 divided by x okay? and these two values uh, will eventually converge to the desired solution. Okay? So, that gives us the graphical insight behind these, uh, this Hinon algorithm and possibly trying to think about how or why the Babylonian people perhaps thought of this particular algorithm in order to solve this particular problem. Next what uh, we would do and again I am not really going to do it in this particular module, but we will defer it uh, to the fourth module uh, is we will do a Taylor series expansion uh, and try to find out how this uh, particular Hinon algorithm can be derived in a rigorous manner and I will just uh, give you an overview of what we are going to do is essentially we want to find the solution x equal to square root of 2. We will square both sides and then we will be able to write x square equal to 2 and that equation we can write it, up, write it out as x square minus 2 equal to 0. If we call this particular guy as our f of x, this problem has now reduced to finding out where the per particular line f of x is going to cross the x axis. Okay? So, that is the problem that we have uh, reduced to and then we will use this Taylor series expansion that I spoke about over here. So, we will use this particular Taylor series expansion around any point uh, a and then we will try to find out how this particular uh, 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 Hinon's algorithm is going to behave uh, from a numerical perspective. Okay, we will do that in the fourth module, uh, but the overall point is that each module that we are going to take is going to have uh, essentially we are going to cover an analysis, lot of it is going to base, be, uh, be based on relatively simple problems trying to analyze the particular method and try to see what those uh, that particular method, what are those properties of that method and so on and so forth. Okay? And that is what we are going to do in, uh, in this particular course. And finally, after, at the end of the each module, I am going to summarize what the module says. Okay, so, what I am going to do next is take up a, a tutorial of Microsoft Excel to show how you can use Microsoft Excel in rest of this particular course. I will just go over a quick presentation that I have made on using Microsoft Excel. So, when you open Microsoft Excel, this is the kind of uh, uh, the overall window that will open in front of you. This is the Microsoft Excel window, it is called the worksheet. At the bottom, you will have the list of all the sheets that are available 
at the top this is the menu bar and this is what is known as the ribbon as I have shown in the next particular slide. So, this is the menu bar as you can see the various menu options the home menu options option tells you various things about cutting and pasting the this particular guy tells you uh, allows you to change the fonts uh, over here you have various formatting for the numbers so on and so forth. Uh, the other uh, uh, menu that will be useful for us is the formulas menu and the final menu that will be useful for us is the insert menu when we are going to insert any figure in this uh, Microsoft Excel. This particular sub menu is called a ribbon in the Microsoft Excel and this is a fairly self explanatory stuff when you actually open up a particular menu bar. This gives you the various options under that menu bar and finally, as I told earlier at the bottom you had the various tabs for the worksheet. Over here what is showing is there are three different worksheets. The, the worksheet that is currently active is what is called sheet number 1. Okay. Uh, the next thing that I want to point out to you is that uh, the worksheet contains nothing but a range of rows and columns. So, the columns are number named as A, B, C, D, E, F and so on and the rows are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. Okay. This particular guy over here is the current cell. This current cell is represented as C, the column C and row 4. The location or the name of the cell is located over here. So, this tells you the current active cell this particular guy over here okay. and as you start entering anything into the cell you will also be able to see it in this formula bar. Okay. Any numerical formula and so on you will be entering in the cell and you will be able to see this in this particular formula bar. What we are going to do is take a look at how we enter uh, numbers, how we enter uh, statements and words, letters and so on as well as how we do computations in Microsoft Excel. And this particular cell, this cell C4 is called the active cell. So, if you have Microsoft Excel that is installed on your machine, you can uh, you will probably have a shortcut on your desktop, you can double click that shortcut and you can go to Microsoft Excel. If you do not have Microsoft Excel, the other options that are available to you include uh, uh, the open office. So, open office has a worksheet which is very similar to Microsoft Excel and the third option that is available to you is uh, using the Google documents. In Google documents you have the worksheet or the spreadsheet documents. Uh, the spreadsheet documents works very similar to the way Microsoft Excel does uh, at least for the examples that I have looked at. Uh, but uh, the whole idea over here is to promote this learning of uh, this computational techniques using this Microsoft Excel or using any kind of a worksheet equivalent to Microsoft Excel. So, let me double click this and it will open um, a worksheet in Microsoft Excel. Okay. So, this is the worksheet which looks very similar to what we have seen earlier. Now, one of the things we can do is we want to select the entire rows and columns, we can press click and press at the top and the entire row and columns will be selected. If we want we can increase the width of each row or a width of each column and let me just go ahead and increase the width of each column to 100 pixels. Okay. The width now it shows as 100 pixels and you will see that the overall width of this particular worksheet has increased. Next thing that I am going to actually do is just select a few rows and columns and just increase the font size from 11 to a larger font size. Let us say we will make this font size as 18 so that anything we write will be visible to us. Okay. Now, I will start typing in the current row A1. A1 is the current row. Let us take some examples in MS Excel okay. and I press enter and this is what I get in uh, this particular uh, cell. Okay. If you look at the formula bar whatever we have written over here appears in the formula bar and 
this is the overall uh, thing that appears in that particular cell. Okay. As you will find that the amount of material that we have put in this cell exceeds the width of this cell. So, what we will do is we will go over to multiple cells and we will just merge the cells. The cells can be merged by using this merge and center button that we have over here or right clicking on this and clicking on format cells and format cells go to alignment and click on merge cells and this will merge all the cells. So, what we have now is that cell A 1 now encompasses 4 columns and is encompassing one single row. Okay. So, let us now take 4 numbers let us call those numbers as A, B, C and D. Okay. Let, let us arbitrarily take numbers 12, 2.3, 4 and 7. Okay. Let us say we want to add the two numbers A and B. Okay. In that case what we are going to do is we are going to use the formula to start entering the formula I first need to type equal sign. Okay. Once I type equal sign it is now ready to take the, the formula what I can do is I can take this my mouse and move to the cell that I want to and this is going to be the, the value of the variable A plus B and I can press enter okay. and I have added those two numbers. Alternatively what I can do is I can write equal to and look at the number of this particular cell, this cell is A3. So, equal to A 3 plus I want to add that to the cell B 3. Okay. So, when I write A 3 plus B 3 immediately what you see is that A 3 is colored with blue color and that particular cell is highlighted over here, B 3 gets colored with green color and that particular cell gets highlighted over here and when I press enter I will get the number 14.3. Okay. Let us say now we want to take the difference B minus C. So, we want to take this 2.3 minus 4. What I can do is I can press equal to, I can click on this, I can press minus, I can click on this and I will get the difference between the two and that is minus 1.7. A third way of doing this and let us say we want to get the value of C multiplied by D. What we can do is press equal to and then take the cursor keys. Okay. Cursor keys are the arrow keys, up arrow, left arrow, right arrow and so on. I will first click on the right arrow okay. and right arrow as you can see leads to this particular cell and the number of that cell immediately comes in our formula bar as well as in our cell. I okay. will click the right cursor key once again and B 7 will change to C 7 because we will go to this particular column and this particular cell. So, I have pressed the right cursor key once and now what I will do is I will press the up cursor key 3 times so, 1, 2 sorry 4 times 3 and 4 and we have gone to C 3. Okay. As you can see every time I press the cursor keys as this particular guy moves you will see that this uh, uh, particular number also changes okay. and we have this number 4 highlighted for multiplication we will use star and 4 multiplied by this. This we can take by moving on, on the cursor key or clicking using the mouse either ways is equivalent to each other and we press enter and we get that number. Okay. Not only this we can also have trigonometric functions, exponential functions so on and so forth. So, to get trigonometric function let us say we want sin of 4. So, we will type equal to and we will start typing the formula. As you ta start typing the formula, the formula that are available to you will be highlighted in this drop down menu. We can choose this particular formula sin okay, and that by double clicking that sin gets available over here and I can then go and click over here, close the bracket and press enter and I will get this as sin of 4. Likewise, let us say I want to take e to the power 7, all I need to do is equal to exponential e x p okay, and the number 7 and press enter. Okay. Now, if I wanted to get e to the power minus 7, okay, 
what I can do is I can go on to this particular formula, go to this formula bar and click at the appropriate location. When I click at that appropriate location, I will be allowed to edit this particular formula and instead of e to the power 7, I wanted e to the power minus 7, I will just put the negative sign over there and press enter and I get e to the power minus 7. Okay. Now, let us look at the case where we want to find, uh, we have certain numbers x okay, and we want to find say x square plus 3x. Okay. And let us say I start with value of x equal to 1, again what I will do is equal to, I will use the left cursor key to highlight this x to the power 2 plus 3 multiplied by x. Again to get x, I will press the left cursor key and I will press enter. So, this is going to be 1 squared plus 3 multiplied by 1 and that value equal to 4. Okay. Now, let us say I want to repeat that same uh, formula for x equal to 2. Okay. I will just press this x equal to 2. I will go on to this particular number, highlight it and just drag it below. Okay. I drag it from the right edge and I will drag it below and as you can see the formula gets automatically updated. So, I have 2 square which is 4 plus 3 multiplied by 2 that is 6 which is 6 plus 4 is 10 and I get the number over here as 10. Okay. So, what has happened when I drag now take a look at this formula bar what has happened. Okay. When I have dragged initially I had this as a 10 multiplied by 3 multiplied is a, a 10 squared multiplied by 3 a 10. Okay. When I dragged it below a 10 automatically became a 11 okay, and this also guy became a 11. Okay. Now, let us say we wanted to do it not just for 1 and 2, but we wanted to do it for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, what I can do is I can highlight both these numbers 1 and 2, take my cursor at the right bottom okay, and just drag it below. Okay. When I drag it below, as you can see in the small square that appears below my uh, just next to my cursor, I see a number 6. That means, I have dragged enough to get up to number 6. Excel has automatically filled in all these numbers. Okay. Now, what you can do is take this and again drag it below and you will get this uh, formula that is repeated at each time. Okay. Let us say that we want to calculate x sorry b multiplied by x where b is this value over here plus c. Okay, let us say we want to calculate that value. In that case what we will do is I will press equal to, I will take my uh, mouse and click on the value of b okay, multiplied by x plus again I will take my mouse and then click on the value over here and press enter. Okay. So, this is going to be 2.3 multiplied by 1 plus 4 which gives you 6.3. Okay. Now, let us say I want to repeat this for x equal to 2 also. We Let us see what happens if we drag and drop it over here. If we drag and drop there is some problem and why is that problem? That problem happens if now you can see what what happens? I am just clicking the button F2, F2 is edit. Okay. So, if I click F2, I will see what happened. So, when I dragged from here below, the formula got updated. Okay. You see what has happened is x instead of this being operated on this particular value has uh, now gone to the value below, but what has also happened is these two also have been dragged below. Okay. So, this is what happens, it is consistent with the overall excel behavior, if we drag it once more again the, the, these two columns also get dragged below. If we want to prevent that, the way to do that is, I will clear this what I had just uh, done, the way to do that is use the dollar signs. If you use the dollar signs, the numbers when you drag do not change. So, if I use dollar $b, $3 and $c, $3 
okay nothing happens over here but when i drag it okay what is going to happen is dollar b dollar 3 and dollar c dollar 3 will not change to b4 and c4 okay i will just drag it over here and we'll just click on f2 and we'll see b has remained where it is c c3 has remained where it is what has changed is from a10 we have changed to a11 so dollar makes excel keep the cell numbers as it were in as when we had entered in the formula and then what we will do is click at this particular edge and drag it below so that these numbers get repeated for the entire column okay so this is what we get when we uh, we do this for this straightforward exercise uh, this is the list of topics that we will be will be covering in this course. Uh, the first module is this particular module. It's uh, it's just the introduction of um, numerical techniques. In the second module, we'll look at uh, computation uh, computation uh, the numerical representation in the binary system, error analysis. As I said, the numerical methods are all going to be uh, essentially approximate methods for solving these problems. And because they are approximate methods, there are going to be errors associated uh, with approximation of that solution. And what those errors are and how those errors propagate uh, in these numerical techniques, we will cover, uh, we will give an, a brief overview of that in module 2. In module 3, we are going to look at linear systems of equations. Uh, essentially, we want to solve uh, you know, the problem of finding the intersection of two straight lines or three straight lines and so on and so forth that is what will be covered in uh, uh, in module 3 module 4 is going to cover uh, solution of algebraic equations uh, you just got a very brief o uh, overview of what we are possibly going to cover in module 4 uh, an example of a nonlinear equation is x square minus 2 equal to 0 in this particular case we want to find out the solution uh, of that particular uh, where that particular curve x square minus 2 intersects the x axis. Uh, in module 5 we will look at regression also called curve fitting and interpolation. So, if we have say 10 data points of x and y what is the best straight line that can pass through uh, these 10 data points. Again it is something that we have uh, you have uh, perhaps encountered in your uh, high school or first year classes we are going to take a look at. Uh, regression and curve fitting in a more formal setting. Module 6 is going to cover differentiation and integration using numerical methods to do differentiation and integration for really complicated problems. Module 7 and 8 are going to cover ordinary differential equations uh, and how to solve numerically solve these ordinary differential equations. Module 9 is going to cover uh, partial differential equations. It is only going to give an overview of how to solve the partial differential equations. That's that's where I end uh, the first module uh, on introducing this particular topic. Next lecture onwards, we will cover computation uh, and error analysis for this uh, system. Okay, thank you.